Threadripper is back, and honestly, its comeback fights it. For the first time since really the first generation, I can finally see why each of the product lines that AMD offers actually exists. The last generation of Threadrippers were pretty artificially limited. I mean, only allowing up to 256 gigabytes of RAM and a 64 core CPU was a bit of a joke, but this time, the lines between the server, probe, HDT, and desktop chips all make sense. Let me show you what's new and you'll see what I mean. You can split this launch into two product categories, Pro and HEDT. The Pro chips are their WX chips, the workstation ones. They're basically just Epic chips, but are limited to one socket per board and get slightly different support and feature sets. Then there are the HEDT chips. Those are the classic Ryzen Threadripper chips that we haven't seen since Ryzen 3000. As you might expect, the Pro SKUs are the highest spec. The top end 7995WX is rocking a whopping 96 cores and 192 threads at up to 5.1 gigahertz, and with a new higher 350 watt TDP up from 280 watts on the last WX generation. We now also get PCIe Gen 5. Yes, all 128 Threadripper Pro lanes offers those Gen 5 speeds. And more L3 cache at 384 megabytes up from 256. Admittedly, this isn't using AMD's 3D V cache technology, but more cache generally seems to be more better. One thing that is quite different from their regular desktop counterparts is that all six TR Pro chips have the same 350 watt TDP. That means that the 12 core absolutely rips. It has a base clock of 4.7 GHz and will boost to 5.3 out of the box. Oh, and all Threadripper chips, pro or not, are unlocked for overclocking. Barely anyone actually will overclock them, especially the pro chips, but it's pretty cool that they are unlocked anyway. Now, AMD was very happy to point out both how much of an improvement over their last generation 5000 series TR Pro this new generation is, and how much better their stuff is compared to Intel's best. I do want to note here that I'm actually pretty impressed that AMD didn't go overboard on the marketing figures here. They compared their old 64 core to their new 64 core, not the 96 core. They actually compared like for like. Madness, I know. Anyway, AMD says that you can expect between 12% more performance in Premiere Pro to 46% more performance in Ansys Simulation, and really anything in between. If you're interested in a Halo product versus Halo product comparison, AMD reckons you'll get between 9% faster compositing in After Effects and 223% faster rendering in V-Ray. That's quite the spread. The other interesting comparison was between Intel's 36 core and AMD's new 32 core, where they say that their 32 core is considerably faster than Intel's W9-3475X, at least in these CAM and CAD apps. That's quite the shot across the bow. But enough talk of the Pro chips, I imagine you're far more interested in the HEDT chips, the consumer-focused Ryzen 7000 series. Now, somewhat sadly, these bad boys don't get the 96-core option. They top out at 64 cores, but they still get the 350-watt TDP, up to 5.3 GHz boost clocks on the 32 and 24-core variants, and are unlocked for overclocking. They do have PCIe Gen 5, but only 48 lanes of Gen 5, which is still double the regular Ryzen chips. They also only get quad-channel RAM, where the TR Pro chips can have 8-channel. Interestingly, both TR Pro and the regular Threadripper chips will work in the TRX50 boards. So if you still want to get 96 cores, but you don't, uh, you do want to save a bit of cash and you don't need the 8 channel RAM or 128 PCI Gen 5 lanes, you can drop a TR Pro in a consumer board. Now sadly it doesn't work the other way around, but 
I mean, that kind of makes sense. The regular TR chips aren't pinned out for 8-channel RAM or all of that PCIe, so it's pretty reasonable. That's a pretty reasonable limitation. One major change is that both TR and TR Pro now support RDIMMs, that being registered RAM. Both support ECC, but RDIMMs are more enterprise than we've seen before. That does mean that all Threadripper chips now support at least one terabyte of RAM, with the Threadripper Pro chip supporting double that thanks to their doubling of channels. And AMD made it very clear that it's the RAM manufacturer's limitation that is keeping that at one terabyte, because once RAM manufacturers produce double the density RDIMMs, Threadripper will support that. So at some point you'll be able to put two terabytes or four terabytes of RAM in your desktop. Yeah, that's kind of insane. Something I have found interesting was the block diagram of the PCIe layout. The WRX90 and I can only assume the TRX50 chipset too are still only connected to the chip via a PCIe Gen 4x4 link. Of course, if you want to store you know, a load of local storage, you're probably going to use one of the six PCIe Gen 5x16 slots connected directly to the CPU. But I don't know, I found it funny. I do also like that you get eight Gen 3 bonus lanes connected to the CPU, enough for two M.2 slots. You also got 10 gig LAN listed here too, which is pretty nice to see built in. So that's most of what's new. We'll have to wait until I think November until we get our hands on these and actually test them and see how insane the performance is. But I wanted to explain a bit more about what each of the product categories are about. Like I said, previous generations have felt very artificially limited, so they don't cannibalize their own market. But now I think they've finally figured out how to lay each of them out. Here it is on a chart. Their Epic chips are for their servers. You can have all of the cores, up to 128 cores in some SKUs. They have all of the PCIe, up to 8 channel RAM, long term support, or long support windows and stability, and you can have multiple chips per board. I believe you can overclock them, but for simplicity in this chart, I'm going to say that you can't because, I mean, no one actually would overclock it in an actual server. They aren't designed for that. Threadripper Pro then sits below Epic with basically the same features except a bit of a different support channel and one socket or one chip or socket per board and at least for now you only get up to 96 cores and no 3D V cache. Threadripper is then below that, with up to 64 cores, a quarter of the PCI Gen 5 lanes, half of the RAM channels, but all of the raw performance. Finally, there are the Ryzen desktop and mobile chips. They have up to 16 cores, 24 PCIe lanes, and dual channel RAM. There's now a clear reason why you might want a Threadripper Pro over a Threadripper over a Ryzen chip, and none of it feels to you know, much of a, a BS software limitation. So that's a quick look at what's new from AMD. I'm pretty excited to see what these can do, but I would love to hear what you think in the comments down below. What do you think about Threadripper coming back to the desktop and to the, the sort of consumer HEDT class? Is it kind of past its time? You know, do you have a use case for 64 cores and a terabyte of RAM? Let me know in the comments down below. Otherwise, if you want to stay up to date on these videos, you can hit the subscribe button, turn on the bell notification icon, definitely check out the rest of the videos on the end cards, because I have a whole load already up in the channel if you're interested. And uh, yeah, if you want to support the channel, there's a load of links in the description, but I'll leave you to check those out. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed it, we'll see you on the next video.